it's been pretty clear over the past couple years that despite the mainstream media trying to cover for the MCU for a while, trying to make excuses for Marvel, even they have come around and been like, you know what? Secret Invasion was bad, but Marvel's had a lot of problems for the last few years. Like, yeah, no shit. Almost like we've been telling you that. But one show that just came out, there were some people that had hope that it could get, deliver the MCU the hit it desperately needs because the first season of Loki by far was the MCU and Disney Plus's most watched series that they've had. If you look back at these numbers, uh, when you compare it to the last one that came out, Secret Invasion, Loki, 2.5 million households when it, you look at these Samba TV numbers. Far and away, the biggest that they've seen. Whether you look at Minutes Watch, whether you look at Samba TV, all the ratings kind of agreed that Loki was the biggest hit that Marvel's seen when it comes to these Disney Plus series. Unfortunately... It looks like over the past two years, a lot of that audience has fallen away. But despite that, Disney's doing their best to do damage control already for the season premiere of Loki. Loki delivers strong viewing for season two premiere, Disney Plus says. This streamer's touting the tune-in for the opening episode of the Marvel series. The season two premiere of the Marvel series racked up 10.9 million views worldwide over its first three days plus a few hours as defined by the industry increasing standard formula of total viewing time divided by runtime. We're going to get into exactly what that means in a second. That's a LeBron James stat right there. Yes. Loki's three-day total compares well to that of Star Wars Ahsoka, which debuted in August to 14 million views, but that was over five days, not three. They're saying that it's tracking slightly ahead of Ahsoka at this point in time. And they're also confirming that Loki's the second highest debut they've seen on Disney Plus, right behind The Mandalorian Season 3 in March. Keep in mind, like we said, that was blasted at the time. Mandalorian Season 3 was a massive disappointment. It was a huge drop-off in the ratings. It was below even that of Book of Boba Fett. Uh, back in March, people were looking at Mando Season 3 as a failure in terms of ratings. Now that's the highest viewed thing that they've had this year that's how bad things have gotten on disney plus but when you look at loki look at this number 512 million minutes watched when you add up all these numbers that is a global number by the way not a domestic number globally 10.9 views 512 million minutes watch compare that to the first episode of loki from season one 731 million minutes domestically not globally this thing has had a massive drop off in all likelihood i think when we start to see some real numbers coming out it's going to have a drop of about 50 percent i think that's legitimately what we're talking about in terms of loki season two versus season one just with the numbers they gave us if you assume that no one else in the world watched it you're still looking at a massive drop off because the episode runtime is very similar 47 minutes to 52 minutes Mm -hmm. This is a disaster for them. And the fact that this is the second highest viewed thing they have, and it equates to what likely is a 50% drop off in audience. This is miserable for Disney plus for Loki and for the MCU as a whole and tells you how many people have walked away. It does kind of give you just another little bit of piece of insight into how bad they've damaged things. Tom Hilson is Loki rock star mega star people in like that him, role but, he's but a star, in that yeah. role. Just, he's just like Robert fucking, Downey Jr. Right? Yes. You throw yes. Robert Downey Jr. in Doolittle. Doesn't yes. necessarily mean anything, but Robert Downey right. Jr. as Iron Man is special to people. Yes, and Tom Hiddleston as Loki. People loved Loki. That time he made that appearance as Loki at San Diego Comic-Con. I believe it was San Diego Comic-Con. You know what I'm talking about, where he was fully dressed up mm -hmm. and he came out there. Man, just amazing stuff. You, you could feel the energy. You could feel the enthusiasm. And that's why a lot of people tuned into Loki season one out of curiosity. And they're, they were a fan of Tom Hiddleston in this role. No one cares about this character anymore. Right now, we live in a time where there is so much news, so much information, so much entertainment out there that people are just always busy with the next thing. And the MCU, you have to do so much work to keep up with the current timeline because, well, did you watch this show? Did you watch this movie? Did you watch this show and how it connects all to this to make you understand the storyline within this? People don't want to do that. It just doesn't work for people. Well, here's one of the problems with these Disney Plus series is that it doesn't seem like they actually have that big of an impact on things. Things happen, but at the end of the day, you kind of end up kind of back where you started. Remember Falcon and Winter Soldier? That entire season was like, okay, it's 
Sam coming to terms with the fact that like he's Captain America now, which we at the end of that episode, it's right where people assumed he would be after Endgame. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like these things that get dragged on for six to eight episodes that don't seemingly have any big time ramifications. When you look at Loki season one, the way it ended with Kang and all this shit, I guess you get a split second of being introduced to Kang, but we've now had like three different ways explained to the MCU of how the multiverse started to branch out. And none of them have tied yet directly back to the Loki series. So it's yeah. kind of like, why should you be invested in these things? Exactly. Like they, they don't give you any real reason to want to. And, and the product's not good enough for you to stay invested either. It's one thing if the product is good, but it's not even good enough for people to keep their time and energy into this. It's just way too much. And, and of course, the general audience, they have way too many options out there to worry about keeping up with this complicated disaster known as the MCU that's not even producing good products anymore. So people are just tuning out. And I think one of the problems with this show specifically is, and I talked about a little bit on Sunday, Loki had a perfect arc. The character of Loki, the reason that so many people like Tom Hiddleston as the character was because <laughs> he, he was this character that we saw through every single phase of the MCU. And he had a total and complete character arc. And it ended in Infinity War with, might not have been the, with the way he wanted him to go out, but he went out. There was finality to it. And he went out, not changing sides again, but instead ready to try to kill Thanos for his brother, right? After doing this entire turn that we saw in Ragnarok, blah, 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 all this shit. Yep. To go back in Endgame, and as soon as I, it was in the back of my head during Endgame, and I may have even mentioned it on streams and stuff back then, I said, if we see Loki show up in some way because he gets the Tesseract and he disappears and then he's just kind of kind of gone. So if we see Loki in some way, it's really going to do damage to his character arc. And now that's what we see. We see a character who didn't actually go through all of this stuff. We have Avengers Loki who just got stopped trying to take over the world. We have Avengers era Loki who watched a Cliff Notes version of his life on a projector for a couple minutes and is now all of a sudden this good dude. And it just doesn't feel genuine. It feels like you're doing damage to a perfect character arc in something that was great, the MCU. And I think that's one of the reasons as well that maybe a lot of people didn't decide to tune in for this season too. Because mm -hmm. they tuned in for season one and they just really didn't like what they saw. And yeah. you're, you're taking the most successful MCU show and it looks like you've lost a lot of your audience. And yep. the reason you can look at that is the, the numbers, the Nielsen numbers for premieres do not lie. Now, once you start to get season twos and stuff like that, it starts to get a little tricky. But 731 million minutes watched for the premiere of Loki season one. That equates with a 52-minute runtime to about 14 million plus views. The same way Disney says views. Just domestically, not globally. That's just here in the United States. And now they're coming out and giving you the number 10.9 million views globally over the first weekend for Loki season two. If that tracks with the same way we've seen with Ahsoka in terms of domestic versus international, typically a 65% domestic audience compared to international split, you're talking about almost half the audience gone away. That's abysmal.